Hi, welcome to the Spare Room Project. This is how to make an old paper graphic like this in GIMP version 2.8. I'm updating some tutorials from older versions of the software and adding some techniques of my own. All of my sources are in the description if you're interested. So let's get started. Let's make a new image. And the image size doesn't matter, but I need one that's 700 by 490. The first thing we're going to want to do is set a background color for this. So let's create a new layer with the shortcut button under the layers window call this background color and we're going to fill it with a color that's sort of a brownish yellow and I found that under the reddish where red meets yellow on the hue slider and then where that sort of meets gray and the color that I like is HTML CBB D85 let's fill the whole thing with that and now we're going to define the edges of the paper so go to select all select shrink give yourself a about a 20 pixel border and then go to select distort and this is going to make the edges of the paper look torn and ragged so set the spread to 20 and the granularity to 3. there's that now invert the selection if you get back in the window and delete all of the color that's outside of the square so this is what our paper is going to look like on the outside and let's add some folds and creases to that. So create a new layer, again, with that shortcut button. Call it crinkles, just like your pet goldfish. And go to the gradient tool, reset your colors, and drag, use the bilinear pattern and drag that over the selection once. Now set the blend mode to difference. Make sure you set that back later. But it's important to do the first gradient on normal. So that it shows up and now we're going to set the difference uh, and do this about 30 or 40 times till you start to see a shape that you like that sort of looks like the folds in paper you can add some radial things to soften those up and have fewer sharp corners just a few more That looks about right. Now go to Filters, Distorts, Emboss. Set a depth of 2, and the other default settings are fine. Looks a lot more like paper already. Go to Colors and Curves, and just drag this profile to sort of follow where the color shows up on the graph and that'll smooth out some of the folds and make it a bit more pronounced looks right to me set this layer mode to overlay now we're going to create some natural irregularities in the color so let's create a new layer call this one plasma because that's where we're going next go to filters render clouds plasma The default is fine. Go to Colors, Desaturate. And again, the default's fine. And set this layer mode to Overlay. So now let's make this paper look like it's seen some things. Go to create a new layer. Let's call this Stains. Go to Edit, Stroke Selection. I want a bit more width than that. Let's try 9 pixels and hit stroke. Now go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And set this blur radius to at least 75 depending on the width of your image. Notice that it only blurs the pixels inside the selection. And don't worry about this black border on the outside yet. It'll disappear later. So now let's add some smudges and stains with the paintbrush and some of the brushes here. You can download a lot of different brushes for this purpose for the GIMP, but if you want to stick with the ones that are available by default, I'd recommend oils and texture hose. So let's go with this one. The key is not to do not to use any brush more than once because we're really good at spotting patterns. Uh, so set your brush size pretty large relative to the image. And don't worry if it goes outside the selection it won't show up anyway let's add one more let's just texture hose make that a bit smaller 
thing right there. And now set this layer mode to overlay. Notice that the black border around the outside has disappeared as it overlays with the background layer. And the stains aren't showing up quite as much as I like, but you can fix that by just duplicating the layer once and they show up a lot more strongly. And that's it. If this tutorial was helpful, please like and subscribe. And from if that tutorial was helpful, please like and subscribe for more creativity and limited space from the Spare Room Project. Thanks.